Hey guys, welcome to episode 15 of Short Bits by Shorty. Just wanted to remind you that, before I start, that on Saturday, October 27th, we have KE's annual event to raise awareness for breast cancer. Uh, we have Skate for the Cure. Skate for... It's on Saturday, October 27th. From 5.45 p.m. all the way until 8 p.m. Um, it's at Skate Nation Plus. Skate Nation. And they have ice skating, games, raffle prizes, and costume contest. Best Disney on Ice costume wins a $50 Amazon gift card. So come out, have a fun time with KE, KY, and PDC. Hope I won't be there because I have to work evening shift that night, but... I hope you guys go and have fun. Also, I want to thank everyone for coming out to Fly Dex Fest over the weekend. I hope you had fun. We had fun. If not, at least I had fun. Uh, we raised over $1,300 for St. Jude's Research Hospital with this event, which is actually the most we've ever raised with this event. So I'm proud of us. Thanks for coming out and supporting the children. Thanks for coming out and doing bingo, raffles, and karaoke. And I hope to see you again next year. Let's get started. Okay, so... We're going to start off with the mechanism of action of these sedatives and um, anesthetics. So pretty much they all modulate the activity of gamma aminobutyric acid or ga GABA or the GABA receptor. Uh, if you can't tell me I'm figuring it out by now, GABA gets its name from gamma, the G, uh, amino, the A, butyric, the B, and the acid, the A. So that's where GABA comes from. So they all modulate the activity of GABA or the GABA receptor. In case y'all don't know by now, the GABA receptor works on inhibition through chloride influx. Um, so the resting state of the cell, the neuronal cell, is a negative 50 to negative 90 millivolts. This is this comes from the chloride ion because remember chloride is negative, and as so when the neuron is not activated, chloride runs through it, and this negative charge contributes to negative 50 to negative 90 millivolts charge through the neuron at its resting non-active state. When you influx chloride through it, um, you hyperpolarize it to decrease neuronal firing. So if it's at its resting state, it's at negative 15 to negative 90, you're hyperpolarizing it or you're adding more charge to it. In this case, you're adding more negative charge to it. And for example, you're making it to negative 180. It's just a number. I'm just throwing it out there, for example. Um, so as you're running chloride, more chloride ions through it, as the GABA receptor is working, you're adding more negative charges through it, for example, because it's negative 180 millivolts. And that leads to um, neurons further um, decreasing their activity through the repulsion of charges. So nature... Ooh, Nature actually doesn't like repulsion, which is the opposite of like dissolves like, which nature likes. So to uh, um, so to act on this, it inhibits the uh, more having more chloride ions run through it, and it actually inhibits the neuron. Because if on the chemical level, if you see chloride ions re repel each other, so let's see, here's your chloride ion coming next to your chloride ion. They actually repel each other, they get farther apart, and this disrupts the activity of the proteins and enzymes in the cell, because proteins and enzymes prefer attraction. As you know, proteins and enzymes prefer, prefer things binding to them, so if they see things re repelling each other, they don't like it, therefore they decrease their activity to compensate for it, and therefore they inhibit the activity of the neuron. So in a nutshell, chloride influx leads to hyperpolarization, further making the cell more negative, and this repulsion of charges causes inhibition. Um, so barbiturates, benzodiazepines, al and alcohols, and the derivatives act by binding to the GABA, by increasing the binding of GABA to GAB, the GABA-A receptor to increase chloride influx and therefore decrease neuronal activity. The benzodiazepines, if you need more information, if in case you haven't enough, had enough already, refer to episode 14 at 27 minutes, 37 seconds. The only thing I wanted to point out from this is that at this part of the molecule, 
you have a hydrogen bond acceptor. Um, if you remember the last video, if not, please review episode 14 at minute 27, 37 seconds. Um, so this acts as your hydrogen bond acceptor. And this also acts as a hydrogen bond acceptor because these are isosteres. So you have a double bond to an add to a oxygen, and you also have a double bond to the nitrogen. These can both accept hydrogens. Um, so the double bond oxygen or the double bond nitrogen at this position can accept nitrogens to accept the hydrogen bond. So now onto your barbiturates and your alcohols. So now we're going to talk about your barbiturates. So these do not bind to the same act, same active site as the benzos on the GABA-A receptor. At lower doses, they're positive allosteric modulators. At higher doses, they can activate GABA directly. So they don't depend on GABA at higher doses like they do on lower doses. They can activate the GABA receptor directly. Uh, here's the general structure of your barbiturates. Um, changing any part of the structure influences activity, potency, lipid solubility, onset, duration of action, which you will see later. Um, in terms of their acidity, so their activity depends on their acidity, or because they're acids, they have activity on the GABA-A receptor. Their, their acidity depends on the number of substituents, which you will see later. So the most important concept, the acidity of the barbiturates uh, influences their activity. And their SAR, which you will see later, um, influences their acidity. So non-acidic compounds are therefore inactive. And strongly acidic um, barbiturates are not active because both cannot bind to the GABA A receptor. Um, let's see. So uh, this is just a, this. Is, you saw this in the last video where the barbiturates. This is just to illustrate how acidic the barbiturates are, and you saw this in the last video. So the barbiturates are acids, and they're the lactam form, and they can interchange or tautomerize to the lactam form, which. Um, does not have all the oxygens as OHs, and these OHs, remember, can change to O negative and H plus. And this H plus is the um, this is the acid part of the molecule. Remember, acids donate hydrogens, so here's the part that can donate the hydrogen. It, is a, it can change to form another lactam form, which has two acid groups, and the enolic acid has all three oxygens as acid groups. And uh, this is just to illustrate that this um, either of these um, OH any of these OH groups can become um, O negative H pluses. This is just to show that this can also form the O negative H plus form. Um, so the acidity of the barbiturates uh, influences their activity, and this is because it has three acid groups at max: um, one here, one here, and then a third here. Having all three OH groups as acid groups are is called the enolic acid. Otherwise, just having one or two acid groups is a lactam group, um, lactam molecule. So here's your SAR. I'm gonna go through each part, each position of the molecule separately. However, in general, for the CNS drugs, in increasing the lipophilicity leads to quicker onset, shorter duration, because. Um, the more lipophilic, the more able you're, the faster you're able to cross the blood-brain barrier, therefore quicker onset. And the more lipophilic, the more easily dis redistributed the molecule can be to other fatty tissues, therefore shorter duration because it leaves the CNS quicker. So higher lipophilicity leads to quicker onset and shorter duration. So position one, if both your R groups are, by the way, you might want to keep I'm going to refer to each part of the molecule separately, so you might want to keep this, bus, this, um, let's see, this whole molecule and all the positions beside you, so you know I don't have to keep flipping back and forth between up here and then the rest of the uh, uh, SAR. So position one: if both the R groups are non-proton groups, meaning they're not hydrogens, then you don't have activity. Because remember, you need an acid to have activity. And remember that eight hydrogens are 
the parts of the molecule that are acidic because acids donate hydrogen so if you can't donate an acid then you don't have activity so if both of them are non-proton groups or non-H hydrogen groups then you have no activity um, here I'm just because I'm lazy I'm gonna draw I drew just the bottom parts of the molecule so here's your first R group here's your second R group this has no activity however if you just have one methyl group and the other hydrogen you have activity because this can donate hydrogens methyl groups cannot donate hydrogens only single only lone hydrogens can be able to be donated so one methyl group has activity both methyl groups do not have activity um, the thiosulfur leads to quicker reaction and shorter duration because sulfurs are more lipophilic than oxygens um, this leads to this is prone to oxidation. Therefore, because it's lipophilic, it's prone to oxidation and fatty tissue binding. Because remember, I said earlier, um, more lipophilic compounds can be redistributed to fatty tissues. So, more lipophilic sulfurs can be distributed to fatty tissues better than oxygens. So here, the sulfur is has a quicker reaction and shorter duration than your oxygen at position two. At position three. Um, remember, more lipophilic leads to quicker action and shorter duration. So adding more methyl groups leads to quicker action, quicker onset, shorter duration. So here's a methyl group. This one methyl group is, has more activity than no methyl groups, which has more activity than both methyl groups. Because remember, cause remember, both methyl groups leads to, both methyl groups at the nitrogens leads to no activity because you need to have hydrogen to donate to have acidity. So one methyl group is more has quicker action short duration than no methyl group and which has quicker action and short duration than both methyl groups which basically has zero activity because you need a proton or a hydrogen group at either of the nitrogens to have activity the five position has a ton of counter uh, components to it so bear with me um, this green, I just drew, wrote something and I couldn't erase it, so I just scratched it out. So unsaturation in the R prime or R double prime um, leads to more potent compounds with a shorter duration. Um, this, these can be oxidized. Um, these are more potent because they can hydrogen bond. Um, these are of shorter duration because they metabolize quicker. So unsaturation leads to higher potency and shorter duration for different reasons um, than the general rule. Rule. So remember, five position has different reasons for the for their activity. So they're more potent because they can hydrogen bond, and they're short duration not because they can redistribute faster, but because they're metabolized quicker. Um, so here's unsaturation. You have the double bond, a triple bond, or you can have the phenyl ring. Um, never mind, the phenyl ring follows a different rule, so scratch that. My bad. So, unsaturation, you just have the um, triple bond or the double bond at the R1, R prime or R double prime group versus having no. Um, double bond or triple bond and this double bond or triple bond makes the compound more potent because of hydrogen bonding and have a shorter duration because it metabolizes quicker um, branching increases the activity um, and leads to a shorter duration and it can uh, it's prone to oxidation and fatty tissue binding so branching is when a carbon group comes off another carbon group and it's not part of the chain. So here's a chain and here's the branch it's coming off of the carbon. Here's the chain, here's the branch coming off the carbon. So these have more activity or are more potent and have shorter duration and are more prone to oxidation and fatty tissue binding than this non-branched molecule. Um, the five alkyl groups Remember, adding alkyl groups increases the lipophilicity, therefore increases the activity. 
So having an alkyl group or having a methyl or having any carbon group at the 5 position is more lipophilic, therefore more active than having no methyl or no, no alkyl groups or no, which means no carbon groups. Remember, um, this means the hydrogens are implied at the 5, five position, so I just drew the uh, hydrogens here, but they can be also represented as this, which assumes hydrogens at that carbon. Um, let's see. Gem dye, sub gem dye substituents, which means both the R1, R prime, and the R double prime position are alkyls, lead to more activity. So remember, adding more carbons increases the activity because it's more lipophilic. Um, the sum of the R carbons in the R prime and the R double prime have to be six to ten carbons. If it's less or more than less than six carbons or more than ten carbons, it can't fit in the receptor. So the optimal number, optimal sum of R prime and R double prime carbons has to be between six to ten carbons. Um, let's see. I drew more here. Okay, yeah. Okay, so over here, you have um, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons which is more active than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this is more active than this because this falls into 6 to 10 carbons, this falls outside the 6 to 10 carbons. Um, let's see. This is 1, 2, this is a gem dye substituted, so you know this is more active than this mono substituted, or one substitution. Um, and this is more active than no substitution. Um, let's see. So, uh, in general, for the barbiturates, um, the cyclic and aromatic um, barbiturates are more potent than your aliphatic, meaning your straight chain barbiturates. So, here's your barbiturate in the cyclic form as a ring. And here is your same number of carbons, but as an aliphatic or a straight chain. So this is more potent because it's more cyclic, or it's it's more cyclic than the straight chain barbiturate. Um, at the bottom of one of of Sappho's slides, he has the I think he writes out active class of compounds and the five five di substituted. There's like four classes of compounds. I'm just illustrating these for you because they illustrate the SAR. So remember, um, so the dye, gem dye substituted are active, um, and gem dye substituted sulfur groups are even more active. Um, and you still have the proton groups, so they're active. Over here, you have one. One substitution and the five five or gem di substituted, and which is active, and you have the one substitution and the five five substitute gem di substituted. Um, ooh, that's wrong. That should be a sulfur. And you also have the sulf sulfur here. So, di substituted means two substitutions. Tri substituted means one, one, two, three. Tri substituted, thio, thio means sulfur. So if you add a sulfur group, it's more active. Um, so adding more methyls increases the activity. Um, however, remember you must have the proton, at least one proton group, or it's not active. So these are all active because they have the proton, well, at least one proton group. Um, these are more active, I mean these are active, more active, because they have gem di substituted, therefore more, because, aka more methyl groups, aka more lipophilicity. This is even more active because it has one more substituted, one more substituent, therefore increasing lipophilicity, therefore increasing activity. Um, this is even more active because it has the sulfur group. Um, Let's see. So your ultra short acting. Uh, um, let's see. 
So your ultra short acting molecules have bulky or branch groups on saturation at position five and they have the sulfur. So if you if they have a sulfur, you definitely know it's ultra short acting. Um and let's see. Um these are very hydrophobic, they're rapidly metabolized. Um Therefore, they have a short duration of action of 30 minutes, and they have fast distribution to fatty tissues because they're very hydrophobic. Um, the short actings have no sulfur, um, they have less bulkier branch chains, and they're less lipophilic, therefore the duration of action is increased to 2-3 to three hours. The intermediate acting have no sulfur as well, they are also less bulkier branch chains, um, they have branching at the, they can have branching at the end, and they have an even longer duration, or three to six hours. So to illustrate these concepts, um, you can tell it's ultra. So if these, if it does, if it does have a sulfur, you know it's ultra short acting. But if it doesn't have a sulfur, how are you gonna tell if it's ultra short acting, short acting, or intermediate acting? When he gives you structures to compare, if he does on the exam. So this has. Um, unsatch so you're gonna count the number of branches and unsaturation at position five. So you have unsaturation here, which is one, branching, which is two, unsaturation, the triple bond, which is three. So you have let's see three things total. Over here you only have one branching and one unsaturation, which is ooh. Um, two. So, having more branches and um, sub unsaturation means that this is ultra short acting compared to this, which is just short acting because it has only has two of the unsaturation and branching. Um, likewise, this has how many of unsaturation and branching? One. Because it just has this one. So, um, one. So, ultra short actings have, if they don't have a sulfur and you can't tell if it's ultra short acting or not, count how many unsaturation or branching there is. If there's more, um, then it's, if it gives you structures to compare in a question, if there's more, then you can tell it's ultra short acting. If it's less, it's either short acting or intermediate acting. So how do you tell if it's short acting or intermediate acting? Um, let's see. So you can tell if it's intermediate acting if it has branching at the end. So here's your branching at the end of the chain rather than over here inside the chain. This is at the end of the chain. Or it has even less um, unsaturation and branching. It also it has less number of carbons. Um, let's see. Less carbons. So, let's see. Um, one, let's see. So you have, over here, you have one, two, three carbons. Over here you have one, two, three, four carbons. So three carbons is less lipophilic, therefore it has a longer duration of action. Um, two, three, four carbons versus one, two, three, four, five, five carbons. Five carbons. So over here, you have. So, um, I'm comparing these two because they're pretty much similar except for the number of carbons. So this has two carbons over here. You have a branch at inside one, and you have one, two, three, four carbons. Whereas you here you have one, two, three carbons. Over for these molecules, you have carbon, carbon, and then a double bond, carbon. Here you have a carbon, branch, carbon, carbon, but this one has one more carbon. Remember your intermediate actings have less carbon for the same um, similarity in structure. 
the two, three, four. So you have four carbons, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So also here you have four carbons versus five carbons. So in a nutshell, you can tell it's ultra short acting. If it definitely if it has a sulfur, it's definitely short ultra short acting. However, if it doesn't, you can tell by the number of unsaturation and branching. Uh, more unsaturation and branching means ultra short acting. Less means either short acting or intermediate acting. Um, intermediate actings have less carbons than um, short actings. And short actings and intermediate actings definitely don't have sulfurs. Um, both short acting and intermediate acting have less bulkier branch chains. Um, and yep, intermediate acting has the longest duration of action. Well, comparing these three, you'll see the long duration of action soon. So yeah, so yeah, in a nutshell, um, ultra short act ultra short actings have no sulfur. Um, and short actings and intermediate actings have less unsaturation and less branching, and intermediate actings have even less number of carbons. Um, that's it in a nutshell. And intermediate and decreasing the number of carbons, bulky or branching, and unsaturation leads to longer duration of action. Um, here. Safa just wanted to illustrate some SAR again. So, remember, saturation leads to different activity for different reasons. So, here you have saturated compound. Here you have an unsaturated compound because it has a double bond. Um, so, this is, saturation makes the molecule more hydrophobic, therefore having a faster onset. Unsaturation increases the potency because it can hydrogen bond better and it's metabolized quicker therefore it has a shorter duration so unsaturation are more unsaturated compounds are more potent and are metabolized quicker than saturated compounds um, but saturated compounds have a faster onset um, this is just to illustrate an except a kind of exception to the general rule that I said earlier that in general more lipophilic leads to quicker onset shorter duration um, unsaturated compounds have a shorter duration because they're metabolized quicker not because they can redistribute faster because they're more lipophilic actually the saturated compounds are more set are more lipophilic However, the unsaturated compounds have a shorter duration because they are metabolized um, faster. Um, so yeah, know those different reasons. Um, yeah. So let's see. Um, your long-acting compounds have short chains. Are are cyclic at position five. They definitely don't have a sulfur. So the only sulfur you can. Sulfur only happens in the ultra short acting compounds. Otherwise, it's not ultra short acting. Um, long actings definitely don't have a sulfur. They can resist oxidation, therefore, a little long acting, and they, they have a duration of more than six hours. Um, so here you have a couple of long acting compounds phenobarbital. These, are, they also, these all have short chains, are, let's see, less than. Less than six carbons. Um, remember, remember, I said the general rule is six to ten carbons, a sum of six to ten carbons, of a sum of a chain of six to ten carbons. So here you only have two carbons, two carbons, two carbons, two carbons. These are long acting. They're also cyclic. They also have cyclic groups, substitu substituents. So remember, the phenyl root, phenyl ring is the same as this cyclic ring. Um, I just drew both out to illustrate it. Um, so if you see short chain and or a cyclic phenyl or a phenyl ring, then you know it's long acting. Um, Methylbarbital is metabolized to phenobarbital by N demethylation. So you demethylate this nitrogen to for hydrogen, and this extends the duration of action. 
Methorbital is metabolized by N-demethylation to barbital, which should have hydrogens. My bad. Um, let's see. Um, this extends the duration of action. In terms of metabolism, I already said that they can undergo N-demethylation, like I said above. You already know what glucuronidation is. This can happen at the oxygen or the nitrogens. So, ooh. Over here, over here. Um, let's see. They can also be oxidized from carbon to oxyg carbon oxygen. So here you have carbon to carbon oxygen. Or they can be oxidized to um, sulfur to oxygen. Okay, so uh, before I start the alcohol section, um, Amanda wanted to give a shout out to her dog, Lola Rose. It's a cute dog. Um, let's see. She's easily scared of things, as you can see by this video. Oh, hold up. <laughs> um, sorry for the lag, but she's easily scared of things, and um, yeah, she's a cute dog. Check her out. Talk to Amanda if you want to um, visit her house to pet her. I she did not approve this message. I'm just saying, if you want to go pet her, talk to Amanda. So finally, we're going to talk. So we're going to talk about your ethanol and your derivatives. So acutely, they act on GABA receptors to increase chloride influx. Chronically, they decrease GABA receptor response and decrease chloride influx because of tolerance and dependence. Um, withdrawal effects um, are caused by excessive stimulation of receptors. So here is your general structure of your ethanols. Um, they're basically a chain of carbons. And on these chains of carbons, you can have substituents on them. And at the end, you have an oxygen. And at the end, you can have oxygen attached to hydrogen or oxygen attached to a substituent. So, let's see. Um, in general, substituting, um, substituting a hydrogen... Okay, in general, substituting a hydrogen at this position increases the potency um, for R1 through R6, so our substituents at the carbon, so R1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Did I write that right? Um... Oh. So, let's see. No, I did not write that right. Okay, so substituents that are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So substituents on the carbons um, can be potent if they're halogens, so if they're chlorine, fluorine, or bromine. If they're alkyl groups, or if they're carbons, they're branched. Y'all know what branching is. Just to illustrate here, I wrote it out. So tertiary branching is more potent than secondary branching, which is more potent than primary branching. So having... Um, Three branches is greater than two branches is, is more potent than one branch. And unsaturation increases the potency of the alcohol. Y'all know what unsaturation is. If you don't, please refer to earlier in the video where I talked about it with the barbiturates. Um, your most potent carbons, most potent alcohols would be your um, longer chain up to longer chain alcohols up to eight carbons. So eight carbons is your most potent. So here I drew it for you. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight carbons. So anything less than eight carbons is less potent. Anything more than eight carbons is more potent. So for the following structures, don't memorize the structures. Just understand the concepts and what makes these um, compounds special. 
on how the SIR, SAR applies to these compounds. So with F chlorvinyl, you have unsaturation. Remember, unsaturation makes the alcohol more potent. So here's your unsaturation with your triple bond um, and with your triple bond here. This O can be glucuronidated. Remember, if you have an ox, if you have a hydroxyl group, you can glucuronidate it. Mm. With chloral hydrate, it actually exists as this. So this is actually chloral hydrate right here. So chloral hydrate is actually this. Um, it can interchange to the oily form, which is the aldehyde form, um, and water surrounding it. And when you the the active forms actually the metabolite of chlorohydrate, which is this. So it has three chlorines and only one hydroxyl, whereas the uh, existing form of chloral hydrate before it's metabolized has two oxygens. So before it's metabolized, it can exist as the oily form, which is the aldehyde form, or the solid form, which has two hydroxyl groups. The Metabolism of the solid form, or the two hydroxyl forms, gives one hydroxyl form, which is the active metabolite. Um, it has, let's see, less carbons than F chlorvinyl, therefore, it has a f increased onset of action of one hour, because less carbons means less lipophilic, means less distribution into the CNS, therefore, greater, higher onset, time to onset. Um, it also has chlorines, therefore it's less lipophilic because chlorines are not lipophilic. Therefore, it does not distribute into other fatty tissues as well. Therefore, it stays in the CNS. Therefore, it has greater duration of action. So important things about chloral hydrate. Um, less, it's less lipophilic because it has less carbons and more. it has a lot of chlorines. So less lipophilic means greater onset of action, not quick onset of action, and longer duration of action, um, not short duration of action like your lipophilic compounds. It exists between the solid and the oily form. However, the active form is when you metabolize the solid form, which has two hydroxyls to one hydroxyl. Uh, Triclophose sodium. Um, it's called that because this FOS is actually refers to this phosphate group. This is actually a prodrug that's converted into the active metabolite of chloral hydrate. If you compare the structures, they're pretty they're actually the same after you metabolize this prodrug. So you have um, three chlorines like over here. Um, you have carbon like over here. And when you metabolize this, you get the hydroxyl. So triclophos prosodium is a prodrug for the active form of chloral hydrate. Your carbamates are termed so because they have this carbamate group. Um, remember, substitu substituting the hydrogen at the oxygen with a group like the carbamate group increases the potency. A uh, special thing about this molecule, it can also metab be metabolized, along with its normal metabolism, which I'll show you later, it can be metabolized on this cyclohexane ring by adding, for example, by adding oxygens. You can add it here, 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 you can even add it. At any of the carbons, you can, on the cyclohexane ring, you can add hydroxyls. Um, let's see. So carbamates are termed so because they have the carbamate group attached to the oxygen, which makes them more potent. Your muscle relaxants include chlorophenicin and methocarbamol. Quick, quiz! Brand name of methocarbamol. <coughs> Robaxin, is that right? Did I get that right? Ooh, that's awkward. Yeah, my Robaxin, yeah. Okay. Um, what makes methocarbamol special is that this... Uh, methyl group, this methyl group, me this methyl, methyl group makes the compound less or more slowly metabolized, which increases duration of action. And here's your carbamate group. 
Um, your metabolism of alcohols follows this scheme. Um, if I can only... I'm sorry, the iPad is slow. First, because this video is getting long. Um, okay, so let's see. Your alcohol is shown here. Um, it's metabolized by alcohol dehydrogenase. Alcohol dehydrogenase dehydrogenates alcohols by the cofactor NAD, which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, to form the aldehyde, which in uh, long form is shown here, in chemical form is shown here. This is your aldehyde. So this is metabolized by aldehyde dehydrogenase by for the cofactor nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide to form the, the acid, um, which is shown here, the acid form. This is polar and excreted. Remember, as, remember I told you that um, OH is, can form the acid form. So this is polar, therefore it can be excreted. Um, so alcohols are converted to your aldehydes, which are converted to your acids. And these are polar, and these can be excreted. These are more polar than alcohols. This can also be uh, metabolized by phase 2 metabolism, by sulfonation and glucuronidation. So sulfonation is when you add a sulfur group. So here's your sulfur group, CH32, CH2, and OSO2. It's your sulfur sulfate group is over here. Um, these can also be glucuronidated. You know that glucuronidation adds sugars. And here's your glucuronidated. Oh, crap. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And these are polar. They can be discreted. Um, finally, you have atomidate, which is another alcohol. And the other sedative hypnotics are ketamine, which is an NMDA antagonist, and your opioids, which are mu opioid receptor agonists. So to review, the mechanism of action of all these drugs is to modulate the activity of GABA and the GABA receptor. GABA receptor acts by hyperpolarizing the neuron, therefore making it more negative, therefore causing more inhibition. Um, let's see. Reviewer the benzodiazepines is found in episode 14. Barbiturates, these do not act, these do not act on the same site as benzos. At low doses, low doses, they're positive allosteric modulators. At higher doses, they activate the GABA uh, receptor directly. The acidity of these molecules um, influences their activity, um, and this acidity is modulated or modified by all the groups attached to it. So at the position 1, in general, well, hold on. in general, for CNS drugs, increasing the lipophilicity um, makes the molecules have a quicker onset and a shorter duration of action. Position 1, if both R groups are non-proton groups or non-hydrogen groups, they have no activity, um, so you need at least one proton group. Sulf adding a sulfur increases the lipophilicity, therefore having a quicker action, shorter duration. Um, adding N-methyl groups increases the lipophilicity, leading to a quicker action, shorter duration. However, you still have to have one proton group. Um, sh let's see, special case, unsaturation, they're more potent because they have hydrogen bonding, they're shorter duration because they're metabolized quicker. Um, let's see, branching increases the potency, um, they used to have a shorter duration, the five alkyl groups have higher activity because they're more lipophilic. Remember, adding methyl groups increases the lipophilicity, therefore quicker action, shorter duration. Gem dye substituents, adding two substituents increases the lipophilicity, therefore increasing the shorter action, activity, and decreasing the duration of action. Cyclic or aromatic uh, barbiturates are more active than straight chain or aliphatic barbiturates. This is just to illustrate the SAR. Um, let's see. Your sh ultra short acting, um, they definitely have a sulfur. If not, they're very branch or very bulky. Um, let's see. These, sh um, 
There's not really a difference between short acting and intermediate. However, if he asks you to find a difference, intermediates have less bulky, less saturation, and less number of carbons. And these definitely do not have sulfurs. Um, let's see. Um, saturated compounds are more hydrophobic, they have a, therefore they have a faster onset. However, unsaturated, unsaturated compounds are more potent because of hydrogen bonding and are metabolized quicker, therefore leading to a shorter duration of action. Special case, remember that. Long actings definitely don't have sulfurs. Um, they have short chains or cyclic substituents. Um, they have the longest duration. Methylbarbital is metabolized to phenobarbital, which extends duration of action. Methylbarbital by end end demethylation. Methylbarbital is metabolized to barbital by end demethylation, which extends the duration of action. Action. As I said earlier, they can metabolize by endomethylation. They can also be metabolized by glucuronidation at the oxygen or the nitrogen. And they can also, they can also be oxidized to from carbon to carbon hydroxyl or uh, the sulfur group to an oxygen. Say hi to Lola Rose. Hi, Lola Rose. Um, ethanol derivatives. Acutely, they act on GABA receptors to increase, chlor increase chloride influx. Chronically, they decrease GABA receptor response, therefore decreasing chloride influx through tolerance. Withdrawal symptoms occur because of excessive stimulation of receptors. In general, here is your stru basic structure of alcohols. Two, you have carbons attached to an oxygen. Adding, sub substituting hydrogen at the oxygen with a substituent increases potency, like your carbamates. Um, substituting R1 through R5 with halogens like chlorine, fluorine, bromine, alkyl groups, branch groups, or unsaturated groups increases potency. Um, tertiary branches are more potent than act more active than secondary branches, which are more active than primary branches. Your most potent are your air car A carbons. Anything less, anything more is more, less potent. Um, F chlorvinyl has unsaturation. The ox hydroxyl can undergo glucuronidation. So can chloral hydrate, because it has the ox hydroxyl group, so that can undergo glucuronidation. The active form of chloral hydrate is actually the single hydroxyl, whereas chloral hydrate is actually the double hydroxyl, and this double hydroxyl can interchange with the oily um, aldehyde form. Um, it has less carbons than ethyl chlorovinyl, therefore it has uh, less quick onset, and uh, longer, shorter, dur longer duration of action, especially because it has the hi the hydrophilic or polar or less hydrophob hydrophilic chlorine groups. The active metabolite of chlorohydrate is the single hydroxyl form. Triclofos sodium is a phosphorylated prodrug of the active metabolite of chloral hydrate. Uh, your carbamates are named so because they have the carbamate group attached to the oxygen. This can be ethinamate. Ethinamate. Is that how you say Ethinamate can be metabolized on the cyclohexane ring. Your muscle relaxants include for chlorphenicin and methylcarbamol. Methylcarbamol has a slower metabolism because of the metho or O methyl group. These are metabolized. Alcohols are metabolized first by alcohol dehydrogenase with a cofactor NAD, and then by aldehyde dehydrogenase with a cofactor NAD to form the acid, which is polar, therefore it's excreted. Alcohols can also be metabolized directly by phase 2 metabolism, by sulfonation and glucuronation. These are polar and are excreted. Here's atomidate. The other um, sedatives hypnotics are ketamine, which is an NMDA antagonist, and um, the opioids, which are mu opioid receptor agonist. So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, constructive feedback, positive feedback, feel free to leave it at pollev.com slash chr i s T I A N R U I six two nine. Feel free to leave it there. Tell a man to say hi if you want to pet her dog. 
this is not an approved message. Tell her you want to pet her dog. Uh, hopefully you got to escape for the cure. Good luck on the exam.